Tom Clark's 6M Podcast is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to Tom Clark's 6M Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Clark, and in this episode, I'm joined by co-host, Phil Lindsay. From the world of professional wrestling comes one of the most popular elements of all time, with a tool that focuses on presentation and dramatic impact, giving the talents that little something extra to get over with the fans and build their characters from the ground up. We're talking about pro wrestling music. Pro wrestling music is an important aspect of modern professional wrestling. The proper utilization of music is a vital component to a talent's overall success and can sometimes mean the difference between a memorable match and a highly forgettable moment. Music is used by many pro wrestling companies for video packages and promotional materials, but it's primarily used for ring entrances. The live crowds often know the performer's entrance theme from hearing just a few notes, and the song itself often sets the tone for the individual that will come through the curtain. Entrance themes were first used in the pro wrestling business as far back as the 1950s, when Mildred Burke and Gorgeous George regularly came to the ring with music blaring on the sound system. The gimmick truly gained popularity during the 1980s when companies like the WWF, the NWA, and the AWA all started using music more and more for their rosters. Fans attending live events began expecting the practice and eventually became a normal part of the pro wrestling presentation. The WWF in particular embraced the idea of music in the business with the birth of WrestleMania. The first WrestleMania took place on March 31, 1985 and featured what was dubbed the Rock and Wrestling Connection, a cooperation between both industries that included pop singer Cyndi Lauper being in attendance and at ringside during the women's championship match. The connection between rock and wrestling did not always include entrance themes, however, as the costs associated with licensing popular music quickly became an issue. As a result, companies like the WWF began recording music in-house, leading to some of the most iconic pro wrestling entrance themes of all time. This was also the case for TNA Impact Wrestling and later All Elite Wrestling. Various different wrestlers have performed the vocals for their own themes over the years, including Michael P.S. Hayes, Adrian Street, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, and many others. Due to its popularity in the industry and the impact it has for the talents themselves, ring music will likely always be a part of the pro wrestling business. It's an important aspect of the wrestlers' personas, providing much of the connective tissue between the characters and the fans they entertain. And that's the lowdown on pro wrestling music. There's nothing like going to a live pro wrestling event. More specifically, a WWE event. And I reference that company right from the jump here because... They seem to be the best there is at doing it big and doing it right. Pyro, smoke, lights, you know, uh, the complete stage show. They dim the lights. They bring the lights up. It's like, I mean, honest to God, it's like being in a rock concert. And if, if anyone listening to this for some reason has never been to see a WWE show live, even if you are not a fan of that company, you know, when the moment comes that you can go, uh, I would highly suggest that you go because it's an experience uh, to be there with other fans, people around you. You can you can feel the crowd going up and down with the matches themselves. When it's a really good match, there's nothing like being seeing there live and being there with the live crowd and everybody experiencing the moments together. I mean, it's really it's an experience, man. There's there's no other way to explain it, no other way to describe it. A big part of that, as any pro wrestling fan knows, is the music. I compared it to a rock concert with very good reason. Here we are in the modern age. I don't know, Phil, in the year 2021, if I can imagine a pro wrestling company without music. And I've been attached to small independent local promotions here in the Carolinas for years. And no kidding, the only music they had was an iPhone with a microphone put up to the speaker because that's all they had that night. And you know, you look at that and go, well, that's dumb. Why even have it? Because it's part of the presentation because it, it says something about the guy getting ready to come through the curtain. It, it's supposed to describe his personality, his frame of reference, his, his moods, his mindset, everything about him. Like the song should, should dictate who that person is before they ever step foot through the curtain. I mean, you know, Phil, we talked, we've talked before about, you know, 
pro wrestling at its best is when they can go back to basics and it's just a good solid pro wrestling match. I don't know if we'll ever see a, a company that will come along that says, you know what? This music thing's overrated. We're not going to do that. We're just going to have our guys come out. I mean, I don't think that's ever going to happen, man. Can you ever envision that taking place anywhere? No, absolutely not. Um, cause I mean, what would be the benefit of not using music at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. And you know, honestly, professional boxing uses it. Uh, MMA uses it. And I find it funny, man, how a lot of the diehard, hardcore UFC guys and fans still rip on pro wrestling, yet their title belts look just like pro wrestling title belts. They have entrance music. They have pyro. They have lights. They have a Titan Tron. I'm like, this is looking very familiar to what I watch every week. So who are you ripping on again? Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody does it, man. It's It's such... It's such part of the presentation. And I like the way you put that. What's the benefit of not having it? I don't think there is one. Um, it's just such an accepted thing. It's kind of like uh, like the tag team's gear has to match and they have a they have a double team move and they, you know, a guy has a signature move that he does, and it's it's uh it could be the way he stands or the way he holds his hand up, or it's a middle finger or whatever. And then the music's just part of that. So it just kind of goes along with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean that's all the way to indie wrestlers. I mean, yeah. Um, when I first started like watching indie wrestling shows, uh, you know the quality could vary, right? But that pop of of having like familiar music when wrestlers come out, like uh, when Rich Juan went back to the indies, he he started using uh Lionel Richie's All Night Long, yes. and <laughs> it's like it just fits. It just fits. It's the same way. I was just saying today, you know, AEW is licensing all this music. And for me, when I think of uh, of Swerve, I think uh, Shaka Khan uh, ain't nobody. So I'm like, WWE has to license this song and let Swerve use it. They should have brought him in with it. It's it's his song. Like every time I think of him, that's what I think of. Well, we started big, so we might as well start big with the conversation. WWE is the biggest game in town regardless of anybody else on the block. And you can compare that in terms of cash flow or whatever. If you talk about cash flow, Phil, WWE is the king and everybody else is trying to play catch up. I think we all know that. So we'll start big here. Start with the big daddy. Um, I, you would got to say that this company's perfected it. And we taught, you just mentioned licensing music. They've done deals over the years. Uh, what, what licensing deals in terms of like actual musicians and bands and songs outside and like floating in the mainstream, what are some that kind of jump to your head right off the bat? Uh, well, I mean, of course they had, uh, you know, uh, but, but bad reputation for, uh, Rhonda. Like that's the most recent thing I can think of that they licensed uh, and yeah. it actually worked well for her. Um, and you know, it just, it made her come off as she should like a mainstream star like she is she's in our bubble as a wrestler but you know at the same time she's bigger than our bubble so she should have a licensed music she shouldn't have music that just wrestling music that's a great call what did she use in mma did she i assume she used something i want to say that she used bad reputation at some point for mma but i could Hmm. be wrong that would make sense. I mean, talk about somebody that they'd spend the money on. It would most definitely be her. That'd make sense. Yeah. Um, right, right off the bat, and I know I'm skipping past a lot of people here, but um, the first one that jumps to my mind when we start talking about this stuff is Triple H. I mean, yeah, of course, Motorhead. Yeah, Motorhead, dude. I freaking love Motorhead. I mean, it's just something about Lemmy that rock. I mean. You you could make the argument that Lemmy was the last true last true rock and roll icon. I mean, I'm trying to think of who else. I mean, the Stones. Okay, sure, you could say the Stones. I guess McCartney maybe, but rock and roll. I don't I don't give a crap what you say. I'm gonna live life on my terms. That's Lemmy. I mean, dude. Uh, the game. I mean, you know, if if you're starting off with one of the top songs of all time, I mean, if you're Triple H, you take that song to the grave. Like there's. Why in the world would you ever use anything else, man? Because it describes oh, him to a T. I am a I am a big fan of his theme song before that. Um, is it my time? Or did you really like that, man? I loved my time. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I can't say I'm in love with that. What about the remix version of um, uh, the Drowning Pool? Do it, I think, on the Ruthless Aggression CD. Um, of of my time. Uh, was it my time, or did they remix the Motorhead song? I don't remember. God bless. I got. I have to look that up. Um, Ruthless Aggression was a good CD. Did you did you pick that up when it came out? I didn't. It's uh yeah, it's really good, man. There's a lot of good stuff on there. They had uh they had uh, DMC remixing the DX song. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. King yeah. of Rocks. Yes, King Rock, yeah. So uh yeah, it's um it's a good album. I, I swear I think there's a Triple H uh thing on there. But he had more than one from Motorhead because yeah. Evolution had one. Yeah, uh, I, man, you just don't get much <laughs> you don't get much cooler than the beginning of that I know. of that theme and just the four of them standing at the top of the ramp. It's just awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Uh Evolution. Evolution, as he pronounced it. And <laughs> uh yeah, was it didn't they do a third? Didn't they do a third? Uh Motorhead? Um Yeah, I think they did a third one, didn't they? see you had uh oh yeah 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 king of kings yep yeah there you go i, I, I was about to say it had to be a, it had to be another <laughs> triple h song um yeah. behold the king the king of kings yeah i mean dx had like great music like the original dx theme is awesome um <laughs> you can't get much better than that it's memorable it's catchy yeah. um Shoot, I mean, like I'm trying to think of any other licensed music, though. Oh, I got one. CM Punk. Uh, of course, uh, Code of Personality. Yeah. Live that, here, man. Such a good band. We, <laughs> did we talk about this when we talked about CM Punk? Like, there's that divide of people who prefer uh, Fire Burns over, over um, Code of Personality. Man, those people are insane. I'm sorry. I know everybody's <laughs> got their own opinion, dude, but Living Color's great, man. I mean, Cult of Personality is by far the better song, but when I think of like some of my more vivid memories of punk, I think Fireburns, man. Like it just like him coming out at um, Money in the Bank 2011. Ah, that and that song just playing out and just like that huge pop. It's just like God, that that's what I think of when I think of punk. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to argue that. I totally get that. I, I've looked back and I've watched that match a lot over the years. So, yeah, I get that. Um, I mean, yeah. Which WrestleMania was that? Was that his last WrestleMania that Living Color played him in for the Undertaker match? I think so. I think. I'm pretty sure it was. Cause I, yes, it was because um, that was the one where him and Paul are walking down a ramp and they're chucking the urn back and forth to each other. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, that was, uh, don't get me started on the whole punk thing. We'll be here forever. But uh, uh, it's funny that Triple H brought up because he was having that heat with punk. And, and Hunter was supposed to be like the, the baby face guy running the show on TV. And he and punk was coming at him one night in a promo. And he, he made the comment to him. He said, who do you think got the Living Color song for you, huh? Who do you think made that happen? I did. Uh, I thought that was funny. They just kind of threw that in there, just as a mm, yeah, yeah. I I hate when he, I hate when he gets out of character and tries to throw throw his weight around and say I yeah, I have the stroke around here, pal. And it's like, well, there's a reason you have stroke around here, guy. Like we we know what it is. We know the politics behind the scenes. Right. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um. And you know, real real quick back to Motorhead. Motorhead playing Triple H to the ring. I mean, that's good yes. stuff. Good stuff. Yes, that was WrestleMania too, wasn't it? They did it twice, and the one that was the best was because there's two different versions. And in my opinion, the one that was the better one was when Hunter came up in the stage right behind them. And yes, spark, yeah, because there was another one when he just came down the ramp, and I don't think it was quite as good. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I agree. It's the one where he comes up behind them. Um, uh, Saliva did the Batista's song. Yeah. Um, not the original, but the remix version. Um, let's see. 
Metalingus. Is that the band that did Edge's song? Yes. The new one? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what they call themselves. I don't even think it's a real band. I think it was a combination of different guys and they uh, put the band together just for that song. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um, and you know, we're just, we're just sticking with, uh, uh, most recent history kids, but we'll get to the, to the other stuff here in a bit. Yeah. And I mean, you've got weird things like them bringing in like artists that are popular to, to do music that is their music, but it's not like a licensed song. It's like a WWE theme song, but you've got like popular artists doing it. Right. And that's right. different than licensed music. Yeah, very true. Like they'll they'll have a remix and they'll just yeah, they'll let their let it have a band come in and do it. Yeah, like for me, when I think of that, I think Kali Bud's SOS for Kofi. Oh or, yeah. Um uh Lil Kim did the Trish Stratus theme song. Um there's another one I like there's another Mark Henry song. Yeah, three six mafia, right? Yeah. Dude, I really like that song. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, Nicki Minaj before she was Nicki Minaj did the Victoria theme song, like her baby face theme song oh. after she had a tattoo. Interesting. I don't even know if I knew that, to be honest with you. Yeah, like it was before Nicki became famous. I don't even think she's credited as Nicki Minaj on the song. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's crazy, man. Uh, that's Silk the Shocker. There you go. Silk the Shocker for uh, uh, MVP's the MVP. I was just thinking about Ice T doing uh, the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> they all came. I think it was at Mania that year. Ice T was out there, and they all had the little derby hats on. There was like the bright colors and the walking canes and all that stuff, and had all the girls out there with them. And yeah, uh, it, you got that's Snoop. a really good song, by the way. I'm sorry, but it's good. It is. You got Snoop doing <laughs> two remixes at this point, which, um. They're very like I'm not a big fan of the Cody remix he does right now. Um Really? You don't like that? I'm not a big fan of it. I like the original Cody theme better. Um, which is fantastic by the way. It's one of the better AEW themes. Yeah. Um and then you've got him doing a remix of the Sasha theme, which I think is I think is good, but that's another one where I have so many vivid memories with the original version of Sky's the Limit that like I don't know, it just doesn't touch the original for me. Well, all right. So we mentioned Run DMC doing the DX. Um, yeah. So, of course, when I hear when I hear the Kings, it's like I just think uh, uh, the King of Rock. I'm the King of Rock. There is none higher. Sucker MC is calling me. So, yeah, there you go. And once <laughs> I get it in my head, I have to say the whole thing because if I don't, it's not. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. There you go. Uh, ready, ready to rumble. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> what about? Uh, what do you all right? So, talk about original versus a remix, sort of new version. Pod doing Ray Mysterio's song when he was in WWE, or when not when he was in, but I think that's still the song he uses. I happen to think that Ray's original song in WWE was better than the Pod version. That's just my take. Yeah, I think I like his original theme song better too. Who's um, that jumping out the sky? Yeah, and he used that come out come out of the ramp. Yeah, I dig that. <sighs> Yeah. Uh, let's see. Rev Theory doing uh, Randy Orton song "Voices." Yeah. Uh, you like I'm that song? He, it's okay. I'm yeah. glad he ditched his first theme because his first theme was not good. It Dude, didn't fit him at all. Didn't Didn't he use the one that they gave to Punk? Wasn't that his song first? Um. Yeah, I know there's a story behind that. I can't remember if it was if he used it first or if the plan was for him to use it at some point. Ah, uh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Uh Saliva also did the Dully Boy song. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Um I actually think the Dully Boy song, uh, We're Coming Down, whoever did that, I think was actually the best version of that song. Um, what about Taker? We've had a, a few different instances of different Art, not 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 like doing his song, but songs that they'll that they'll license and and get. Oh um, uh, yeah, I I can't believe we forgot licensed music with him and and yeah. missed out on a ten, chance to take about talk about American Badass and yeah, <laughs> and Kid Rock. <laughs> oh boy, Kid Rock. 
who oh. thanked everybody in that song and named his influences except Metallica. I'm like, you do know you're rapping a Metallica song here. You can't even thank the band in the song? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Undertaker, when I think best Undertaker song, I, I am a big fan of Ministry Taker. And so I was a big fan of like everything from that era. Just his look, the the theme song, his mm-hmm. entrance. Um, I I just think Ministry Taker is the best iteration of the character. Oh wow! I'll say this about um, about the uh, the Kid Rock thing. When he came back that night for the first time in a brand new look with the bike and the trench coat, dude, that that moment still gives me the chills, uh, dude. I'll watch that to this day and be like, God, he kills everybody in the ring. And yeah, uh, it was cool. It was I, Biker Taker. Um, a lot of people kind of don't like it, but I thought at the time he fit that time period well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you you just couldn't have him doing the old school Taker stuff forever, and I thought it was a good refresh for the character. Um, and yeah, he did come back and look like a huge star with Kid Rock and all that stuff. Very true. Uh, Lint Biscuit with Taker. <sighs> he rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't wasn't a big fan of Roland or the other one when he's um when he's rocking a big red. I wasn't a fan of either of those songs. But oh God, you've done it now. Oh, it's I terrible. It. I could stand it, <laughs> dude. When it was just an instrumental, it was awesome. And then they put some schmuck doing words to it, and I'm like, "Who's this clown? It's terrible." Like, gone and made a big mistake. What? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, I mean, Terrible. Uh, recently, it did give me some good throws for a joke, though. Recently, when he got mad that uh, uh, his wife wasn't on the best women's champions list and she yeah. complained about it, I, that was immediately what I thought of. So that was my <laughs> immediate tweet. I was like, you've done it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh yeah, man, when it comes to, uh, and, and I'm going to get back to the Biscuit thing real quick. They performed for him, too. Um, and I forget what show it was at, but uh, listen, I, I, I'm no Fred Durst guy. I never have been. I will say this for him. He was unapologetically who he was, and he didn't yes. care if you didn't like it. He wasn't going to change for you. And at the end of that song, he's flipping off the crowd who's booing him. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, look, man, Fred got paid tonight. He and Taker are buddies. Screw it. Who cares if you don't like it? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm sorry. I kind of, I respect the rebel. I do respect the rebel. I can't help it. Yeah. I mean, Fred Durst as a, as a entertainment character is better than Fred Durst, the musician any day. Oh yeah. No doubt about it. Um, okay. So staying with Taker, dude, what about cash? God's going to cut you down. I mean, dude, when they, whew, that's good stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm trying, what, the what era was it? Um, this is when I think he first started going part-time. And uh, I'm, I'm wanting to say it was, I don't know if it was the Brock Lesnar stuff or not. Um, but the sound of the chains in the background yeah. uh, of that song, dude, so good. I kind of wish he had stayed with that longer than what he did. I thought that really fit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they eventually went back to the usual uh, general music. Yeah. And I misspoke. It's Alter Bridge that did Edge's song. For, maybe Medlingus was the album that I'm thinking of. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So, all right. So uh, uh, we kind of spent the first 20 minutes and didn't mention maybe – one of the most impactful theme songs in the history of that company, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, I mean, you don't get much better than that. Uh, that's that cue of that uh, glass breaking and oh man, jumps into that riff. It's it's perfect. I mean, it's the perfect theme song. Um, if 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 Jim Johnson is not in any Hall of Fame, he should be in a Hall of Fame for just that song alone. Yeah, and we've we've got to mention kids. If you don't know who we're talking about, you got to look this guy up. And when you see all the work that he's done, you ask first of all, why is he not still doing it for Vince McMahon? Number two, why has no other company picked him up? Because this guy, holy God, man! 
I mean, he's got it. You know what I mean? This the amount of I say hits, but you know what I mean. Um, the amount of themes that he was behind that had a hand in that he wrote. I mean, dude, this guy's crazy talented, right? Yeah. I mean, he's produced or composed, however you want to say it, that almost every memorable theme song from the Attitude Era up. Um, yeah. This guy's like the man. Like, you can't, uh, when you think of wrestling music, this guy is like the guy, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, I just don't understand. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't know that everyone left on good terms because he was replaced. Didn't the CFO guys replace him? Yeah, and then the CFO's guys aren't even there anymore. Yeah, they're gone. I don't know what happened with that either. Replaced by Def Rebel. <laughs> Def Rebel. So. Yeah. I won't get into my complaining about WWE's recent theme songs and how terrible they are. Uh, hey, if we're going to talk about the good, we're going to talk about the bad. Um, I don't know if there's anything right now that I'm totally in love with that they're doing right now. From WWE? Yeah. Um, uh, Any of the CFO stuff that has lasted, that's still there, that stuff's great. But a lot of the stuff that they've changed since they left, like the Nikki Cross theme song, is atrocious. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, CFOs, they gave us Shinsuke's theme song, which is phenomenal. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, uh, they gave us Bobby Roode, Glorious as well, which is also amazing. Very um, true. Finn uh, Balor. Finn Balor. Finn, Finn Balor's theme is amazing. Uh, uh, Empress of Tomorrow theme song. Come on, Oh, I, that's yeah. one of my favorites right now. Oscar's <laughs> theme song is awesome. Uh, dude, remember Adam Rose? Adam Rose had a really good song too. Yeah, yeah. Most of the NXT guys have great music. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, don't want to say too much great things about Velveteen Dream, but when he first came about <laughs> and his theme song was awesome to me. I love his theme song. Right. Um. If we're going back to the beginning, from what I have come to find, supposedly, and it's only fitting that this is the answer, there's stories about Mildred Burke using a song to come to the ring to, and we're going old school. But most everybody is, is of the same mindset that Gorgeous George was maybe the first guy to use one all the time, and he hmm. used pomp and circumstance. And we all know that as the Randy Savage entrance song. Right. But now that I think about it, wow, that is perfect for freaking gorgeous George, man. Because those old clips of him, man, I, I I would love to have been in the in the audience just to be able to see him in his prime and just see that character and that personality, that swagger. I mean, he was on to something, dude. George was light years ahead of his time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's there's guys today that would kill to have the heat that he had. They'd kill for it. They'll never have it because they'll never be as good as he was. I mean, that's good stuff, man. Um, if we're talking WWE, uh, we got to talk about the red and yellow because we kind of have to. Um, <laughs> uh, Hulk Hogan, brother. Uh, See, this is, this, <laughs> I know he's controversial right now, but I have been always one of those guys that was never a Hulk fan. Like, I mean, I've never really got into Hulk, and I think his music was a part of why I didn't get into him. It just felt so cheesy for me at the time, right. and I was just like, what is this? And I mean, I could even get into Macho Man coming out with the pomp and circumstance, but something about... I am a real American. I was just sitting there like, yeah, this this is my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I've I've told this story I, I on on different podcasts over the years and then I, I, I grew up a Jim Crockett fan. And so NWA, Mid Atlantic, Georgia Championship, Florida Championship, that was my wrestling. And so the bright, shiny circus pro wrestling was on the other channel, and that was WWF. That was Showtime. That was you know, that was the, the big top and McMahon was, uh, the, the, the guy with the big top hat and the, the tuck, the tucks on and Hogan was, uh, the paper champion. That's what Flair and Dusty called him. 
So that wasn't my wrestling. I'm not going to say I didn't watch it. I was a kid. Even as a kid, I watched all the wrestling I could watch because I loved wrestling. Um, I'd be lying to you if I say I didn't like Hogan as a kid. But as you get older, you start to figure out, wait a minute. Hogan doesn't really do much except punch and kick and drop a leg. And even before you know what the word work means or shoot or any of that stuff, you start seeing other guys around him like, man, Roddy Piper's really good. <laughs> like Hogan just kind of doesn't do a whole lot, you know? So it becomes pretty clear early on, but man, that song, I mean, you could argue that it's the biggest song in the history of that company in terms of, a. I know all the stuff he's guilty of and stuff he said, but not even thinking about, any of that crap as a person, but that song, the impact it would have on live crowds, dude, those old clips, man, it's shocking how that crowd would come to life as soon as they heard the opening chords of that song. Yeah. And isn't that, uh, that Jim Johnston as well? I think that was before his time. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I don't think Johnson was with them. Johnston, excuse me, uh, was with them during that time. Um, and I'm pretty sure Rick Derringer did that. Hmm. Pretty sure. Uh, yeah, all the songs were produced by uh, Rick Derringer on the original wrestling album. And uh, and Real American, the song in question, kids, uh, I believe was not even done. Actually, it was not even done for Hogan. It was done for Barry Wyndham and Mike Rotunda, the U.S. Express. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. This was the wrestling album. Phil, this was the one I was uh, we're talking about we should have this particular episode on. And I can't, it's not on iTunes. It's nowhere. Like you can maybe find someone that's got like a track listing or like a playlist, but um, I don't, there must be a rights thing to this for some reason. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, Derringer produced the album. It's got some, got some stuff on there. Don't go messing with a country boy. Hillbilly Jim song. If you don't know the lyric, kids, don't go messing with a country boy, a country boy, a country boy. Don't go messing with a country boy, a country, country boy. So <laughs> that's basically the whole song. <laughs> but I will say this. They had guys on their side, man. They Jimmy Hart was a musician uh, before he ever got into wrestling. So he was, you know, um, had a good ear for it. He knew people in the music business. He knew Derringer. Um, and, you know, call it for what it is, man. Phil, uh, uh, Vince was ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff, and he knew that music was going to be a part of it, and he wanted to make it a part of the package. And I'll, I'll give him his props, man. He had a vision for this stuff long before anybody else ever did. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about that era of, of music with, I mean, I already sang the praise of Jim Johnson, but I mean, just the, the number of things that, that, I mean, even if you look at just Vince, like, no chance in the hell is just so classic. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, the the whole time we've been talking about this, I've just, in my head, been replaying a lot of these songs that you just get, you just you just hear them so much and get used to hearing them, and uh, it just becomes part of everything. What about the rock song? Basically been uh, the same forever, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been the same. I mean, there's like basically like that um, bigger, like grander version of it when he came back when he was basically Hollywood rock. Um, yeah. But it's essentially like the same like melody and the same. It's just they've done interpolations of it. Um, but yeah, it's basically the same. Like I feel like the rock when he became the rock and he got his own theme music and the entrance became the entrance and he comes out and he throws one arm up. All of that stuff is like. Ah, man, like I'm a big rock fan, so like all of that stuff is fantastic. Even when he comes back, sometimes I'm like, I just wish they would use the original Jim Johnson version, like because this version just seems like it's over, <laughs> overproduced in, overproduced. in comparison. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, but I I think the best version of the rock song was done by Method Man. Hmm. Yeah, it's on the Aggression album. It's good stuff, man. So. No, know your role is the original version, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's right. 
Uh, Aggression is a good album, kids. If you if you've never checked that out, you got to go check it out. Uh, it came out in uh, two thousand. It's got the Kings performed by Run DMC. That's for DX. Um, you got you got uh, was it? Uh, uh, let's see, Cool Keith and Old Dirty Bastard doing Wreck for Mankind. Oh man, I don't, I don't know if that one ever took. Oh man, the 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 Jim Johnston Mankind theme song. It's fantastic. The car so crash good. should forgive me. Yeah. Now the one before that was the one that had the creepy like orchestra behind it because he was still that Phantom of the Opera kind of sound. Remember that? Yeah. I I like I don't even I don't like I know of it, but I can't even like if I had to sit here for a while and try and hum it, I couldn't come up with it. But like I just immediately think the mankind theme song every time I think of. It. Yeah. Let's see what else is good stuff on here. Pimpin' Ain't Easy, uh, Bias T, another good song. That's a really good song, man. Uh, let's see. Big Red Machine, performed by the East Siders. Um, Hell Yeah, performed by Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg rapping Stone Cold to the Ring is something I would need to see live to enjoy. <laughs> That'd be different, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, here's one. Because we're kind of all over the place here, but it's fun. Uh, freaking maybe my favorite that's ever come out of that company. That's a big statement, dude, because there's a lot. Freaking Gangrel and the Brood, man. <sighs> the, the Brood's theme song in that entrance was just bad. <laughs> it was, oh man, you're talking about like an all time great entrance. That was so just so amazing. Do you know what I mean? I can't tell you anything else that memorable about them as a stable, like match wise, yeah. but I can always think of their theme song, like them coming up with the puffy pirate shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the with the um flaming ring and then like uh Gangrel coming out and spinning the blood. Yeah. Gangrel, a very unra- underrated talent. Um underrated worker. He was very innovative. Uh I had never seen jumping DDTs. And I had never seen uh, that thing that Edge did. He started calling it the execution, where he picked the guy up by the waist and kind of spun around and face plant DDT with like between his legs. I'd never seen that before. Uh, the the impaler DDT. They were bringing all that stuff to the table, and I'm sure that Gangrel was bringing that from Mexico or wherever it was that he was he was coming from. Because man, he was. I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. They were they were a pretty innovative trio and. Uh, I'm with you, man. That music, my God, it is freaking phenomenal. It's so good. And I was actually listening to it on the way home today in preparation for this because I could just turn that up really freaking loud and enjoy it. Really good stuff. Um, I think that might be my favorite song out of that whole company. And again, that's saying a lot. Here's something else. The opening guitar riff of the New Age Outlaws. Yeah, I, when you yeah. hear that, uh, there's not a wrestling fan on the planet. I would submit that when you hear that, da, na, na, na. oh, you didn't know exactly. Yeah, I mean, play that, dude. It, like in in a in a crowded uh, uh, wrestling uh, arena before the show even starts, they could they could pipe that in with nothing else, and everybody in the crowd would do it. So that's good stuff. I mean, that's part of being memorable, right? That's part of you know, uh, not only do you hope that they remember you for what you did in the ring because you want to steal the show. Anybody on the card, if they're a, a talent worth a flip, they want to steal the show. They want to make an impact. They want people to be talking about them after the fact. The music's part of that, right? I mean, the impact that the music has on the crowd, on the match, on the talent. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole package, man. Um, Yeah. I feel like Brock's theme is kind of like that. And I'm not even a big Brock fan, but... Every time he comes back and we hear it for the first time in a long time, I remember like how great his theme is. I'm with that. I'm totally with that. Yeah, it's an it's an unexpected song for him too because you kind of wouldn't imagine that fitting him. But you know, fast forward years later, I mean, you kind of can't picture him not using that song. Yeah. So it's even got a DJ in it. it sounds because like there's like a scratching going on back there. <laughs> Yeah, that's different. That's different for Brock, you know, but it works. Um, You know, if you want to talk about recent history, you could always say 
um, the song that that became Romans, but was the Shields initially. And they had the the call the call out the echo at the beginning, you know the uh, call of the uh, was it uh, uh, I can't remember what Shield stands for. Now I know the E was echo, Lima Delta. Um, but the minute that song hit, the minute you heard that that walkie come over, then the song hit. You know the Shield was coming down. Everybody's standing up trying to find where they're at coming down the steps. Yeah, is that that CFO as well? I think so. I was a big fan of the Ambrose theme song. Um, he, it's not as, it's not as special as like the glass breaking, but you hear that, uh, the, uh, motorcycle rev up, mm, you know, it's, yeah, it's Ambrose. Yeah. That's true. And kind of, kind of the same. I was glad they brought, um, Rollins' theme back. Cause I didn't like the Messiah theme song. So I was like, yeah, get, yeah, bring back the burn it down. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. Were you were you a fan of of the burn it down chant when he was like uh, a good guy? The first time I heard, I heard it on there, I was like, "What was that? Like what? I don't know. It just seemed out of place. It seemed out of place." I'm telling you, at the time, I know Rollins, you know, fell out of favor with people, and now he's a heel. But at the time when he was killing it as IC champion. Every time we would come out, I would legitimately yell "Burn it down" when he came out, along with the song, because it just was it. It I don't know. It this was live crowds at the same time, and the live crowd would yell it too. And it, it was fun. I mean, that was just what wrestling is. Like, if you can't get into the you know call and response of of wrestling, then you know you're watching the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm with I'm with that. I I can get with that. I've done it too. I, I admit I've done it too. And it's hard to not sing along with certain songs when people come out too. You know what I mean? Oh uh, man, that that reminds me. There's no call and return, but I when you think of debuts and you think of one of the best themes to debut with, uh, break the walls down. Jericho. Oh yeah, yeah. That's good stuff because the the version that ultimately became the one that we all know, um, and I think it was the original. Um, even Chris didn't know the lyrics to that freaking song for years. I still don't even know if he knows the lyrics to it. It's so funny. It was one of those things where he's like, okay, fine, I'll use it, whatever. But then, like, he didn't even know what they were saying. You could hear his name being mentioned and break the walls down, that kind of thing. Yeah, oh, man, break the walls down was so great. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we've done this a few times here, but when you compare Jericho theme songs, like, is it, I know for some people they are firmly in the camp of break the walls down, and some people are now like believers that Judas is a better song. I'll I'll, I'll be straight with you. I can't say that I'm a I'm a um, a, a fuzzy uh, aficionado because I'm not. I think it may be the best song they've ever done. I, it just it's a really really good rock song. It it's is. got. It's got good breathy vocals. There's a there's a quiet. There's a build up. There's hard rock to it. I mean, it's it's got a great hook. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if dude, if they could just keep replicating that formula, man, because they make noise. I don't know if they make noise like Billboard Top 100 kind of noise, but in terms of downloads and stuff, dude, they they get a lot of attention online. I mean, it's wow. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I again, I. I don't know what we're talking about mainstream cover Rolling Stone kind of thing here, but you know, uh, in terms of how music is measured and success is measured these days, I would think they're probably doing pretty fine, pretty good. I mean, they were touring the world before the pandemic hit. So, yeah, uh, I, I will say for Judas, I really like Judas. Um, I like Judas more before they started playing up the look. Everybody sings along with it, guys. Look how oh, happy yeah. people are to sing along with it. That got really, really old for me really fast. But man, him coming out at Wrestle Kingdom to Judas was phenomenal, man. Yeah. Like that still is just one of the coolest moments for him of his career. Um, and I mean, it it did bring something special when he came to AEW. I mean, um, the entrance with the choir singing it was man, that was really cool too. Um, I think that was Revolution, right? I think so. Yeah, um, but I mean, yeah, that. But I, I don't know. I, 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 I would at this point, just because we're so used to Judas at this point, I would think Judas is the better Jericho theme. Yeah, I agree with that. 
And talking about singing along, if I can jump around again here real quick. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I got the looks that drives the girls wild. Freaking Shawn Michaels, man, singing his own song. And he'll admit he's not a singer. And, you know, to hear the 50, to see the 55 year old guy coming out, he's still using the same song. But, uh, hey, man, it's a classic. You can't tell you can't tell me you don't love it. It it suited him at one point. It was perfect, man. Classic. I mean, again, that's just one of those things that is just so quintessential wrestling. Like Sean strutting out there with his theme music. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> like it just that it just never gets old to see, man. I mean, even old Sean running around the ring and he just <laughs> doesn't have the hair anymore, but it just still just still quintessential WWE, man. Like, I just couldn't think of wrestling without Shawn Michaels flexing with the fireworks behind him. <laughs> it was sexy boy glaring. Yeah, and just just ballsy to do that kind of stuff. But it's like, and like Sherry sang it for him at first. I think the first rendition of it was Sherry, wasn't it? I think so. She's still on it, but she's not singing like the actual verses for it. She's just doing right. like the ad libs. It's so cool that we still have a little piece of Sherry every time we hear that song. I think that's pretty nice. Yeah. Nice little tribute. Um, and, you know, he wasn't the first one. Exotic Adrian Strait sang his own theme song. <laughs> and it worked for a lot of different reasons than it worked for Sean. But the main, the main similarity <laughs> between the two <laughs> was that it got people talking. People couldn't get enough of either guy. And uh, I, I think... Again, dude, talk about underrated. Adrian Street is one of the most underrated. And and I, I I can't say he's the best wrestler I've ever seen between the ropes. But just like Gorgeous George years before, a guy that completely understood what he could do, he knew how to get a reaction. And, dude, the best thing about watching Adrian Street was not just watching him, but watching the fans in those days just – like they're getting red and blushing and turning away and couldn't they couldn't even look at him. I'm like, this is the best heat ever. I love every second of this, man. <laughs> In that same vein with with um Sean and, and George, like when I think of guys that do their own theme, I think of Tyler Breeze. <laughs> Super yes. good looking everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he had that voice say, Oh look, it's Tyler. That's such good stuff. <laughs> And then see, because yeah, the camera always starts at his boots and then pans up, you know. That's yeah, when stuff. I first saw it, I didn't get it, but man, it's <laughs> it's perfect for Tyler every time I see it now. Uh, Jim Johnson was responsible for Brock Lesnar. He was responsible for the Shield. Listen, this is just kids. This is just a tidbit. Okay, this is not even all of it. I'm pretty sure that Jim Johnson also brought us Kurt Angle's theme song. Which uh, is also pretty great. sure. Yeah. Uh, pretty sure. And, and talk about Angle. And, you know, the fact that he leads the chorus of You Suck is kind of weird. To this day, it's a little weird, but it's okay. People say it because they love him and appreciate him. But, uh, <laughs> it's so, oh, remember, remember when they, when they remixed that song so you couldn't chant along with it? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes, dude. Yeah, I, come on. Just let the fans be fans. That would be like, that's like John embraces at the at this point that people sing John Cena sucks at the beginning of his song. Yes, so good. Tom Clark 6M Podcast is sponsored in part by Radius Law Group. Every day, Radius helps individuals, families, small businesses, and nonprofit organizations throughout North Carolina, Florida, and Pennsylvania resolve their legal issues by providing effective legal counsel in the areas of estate planning as well as elder law and Medicaid. Radius Law holds the radical belief that working with a lawyer can indeed be enjoyable. So give them a call at 1-800-519-5667 for more information and tell them that Tom Clark 6M Podcast sent you. My kid was was much younger when they started doing that, and uh, I would never have let my kid say the word sucks. I mean, he's he's 12 now. It's different. But at the time, I don't know what he was, eight or nine or something, like maybe seven. And he knew that I he couldn't say the word sucks. So he would laugh 
and he would try to say it with the song and he'd say he would just go john cena huh and that's all he would do because he was cracking up and thought it was funny i'm like don't you say that word kid <laughs> so. yeah i mean yeah I mean, I can't think of him coming out now without people <laughs> coming down to think of John Cena sucks now. I know, right? All right, kids, here's just a taste. This just this is just a little tidbit. Jim Johnston. This is a Hall of Fame resume, if I've ever heard one. The Rock, The Shield, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, Randy Orton, Kane, uh, 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 Chris Jericho. I mean... That's just a little bit. Daniel Bryan, of course, we know Daniel Bryan is different. That's actual Flight fly of the Valkyries. It's just been remixed, right? So it's not actually Jim Johnson. Uh, but, dude, all those guys, I mean, come on, man. You know? Uh, again, Hall of Famer. I just, I don't know what better, what more to say about that guy. He's so freaking good, man. Yeah. What a musician. Um. What do you think is, uh, I don't know, dude, this may not be easily answered. What are the songs you think best fit the talent and maybe ones that don't quite fit the talent too awful much? <laughs> that best fits. Uh, is this just WWE or just any? I, I don't know. We can start branching out. We've not covered any other companies yet. So, um, best fits the talent. Um, hmm. I mean, you don't get much more perfect than Stone Cold theme song. It fits him perfectly. True. Uh, uh, I think Sami Zayn's theme song fits him perfectly as well. Mm, um, yeah. I mean, I've already said Nikki Cross's theme song is terrible. Why is it like, <laughs> it sounds like country music and she's yeah Scottish. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, I've got one that I think actually fits from two different companies. And I think it's Rhino. Because I actually think that Rhino's WB song and TNA song, I think are both equally as good that fit him perfectly. Yeah. The thing about TNA is they did a lot of what WCW did back in the day. They would do like sound alikes. Yeah. Uh, where they would try to get it close. Like they tried to do a sound alike of, because Power Man 5000 started doing the Dudley Boys song toward the end of their run in WWE. So when they became Team 3D and TNA, their music was a sound like of Power Man 5000. Yeah. Um, and WWE does a little bit. Um, they Every now and then they do a sound alike. Because, um, I mean, well, that Samoa Joe's music is, is, uh, is, a, is a sound alike. It's true. Um, which, by the way, absolutely love Samoa Joe's theme song. Um, yeah. WWE theme song. Oh, yeah. um, and, I and mean, he, that fits him perfectly. Oh, my God. And DX's song is a sound like a Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. You know? Um, yeah, Carmella doesn't use it anymore, but her original theme song was clearly the Iggy Azalea song that they didn't have rights to. Ah, <laughs> it was clearly. Yeah, it sounded yeah. so close to it. Um, I try to think somebody else is perfect. I think AJ has had several great theme songs. and I mean, his current WWE theme song is pretty perfect for him. Yeah. But... I am a huge fan of his New Japan theme song. I loved it. Yeah, same um, here. Loved his New Japan theme song. I I think that's possibly his best theme song. And the song that he uses now was written for James Storm. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. I'm not sure if that fits James Storm. Honestly, I, know, right? I think it fits AJ better. I mean, uh, if you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of, yeah, I can see this doing James Storm because I'm singing it in my head right now. Because <laughs> ain't nobody breaking this redneck. Yeah, I can kind of see that fitting James Storm. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, but no, I, I agree with you. Um, the thing about WCW, if I can go to that real quick, is, of course, when they were bought by Ted Turner, uh, they incorporated some music. I mean, Sting, when he turned heel, started using Seek and Destroy by Metallica. It was the flat out song. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of that had to do with, you know, Turner, you know, Turner Entertainment, you know, Warner Media at the time, and, you know, owning the rights to use these songs. I mean, DDP's song was a sound alike of Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
I I would say one of the perfect licensing today is Jungle Boy using using the Tarzan theme. I mean, it's it's great. Yeah, it's pretty. It's cool. it's perfect for Jungle Boy. Yeah, I didn't dislike the other one they were using, but no, this this was perfect for them too, for sure. Um, dude, what other company do you think has done? I want to say a good job. Good for them is what I maybe how I should phrase it, but um, I'm trying to think of you know. I, I'm jumping from company to company here again, but I got to be honest, man. A lot of the stuff in AEW, it's um, Mikey Ruckus, which yes. I don't know a lot about this guy, but I'm not in love with a lot of the stuff. And I think some of the reason is it's just not, it's not grabbing me. Darby's song is different. Darby's I think is the one that stands out more than anything else yeah. in that company. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I really like Scorpio Sky's theme song. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Hmm, who else? Uh, Sean Spears surprisingly has a great theme song uh, performed for it by Josiah Williams, who actually works at WWE. He came out and he rapped along with the Undisputed theme song um, oh, for Adam nice. Cole, and yeah. he actually does the verses for Sean Spears' theme song, which we didn't even talk about. Undisputed theme song, which is come on, man! I get yeah. <laughs> it. It sounds like it should be like cheesy rock music, but it's just fantastic. Like. It just fits them so perfectly as a group. Um, and I thought Josiah did great that night, but I hated it. Uh, it's so funny. Like, I thought he did great. I just didn't like, I didn't think it fit. For me personally, it didn't fit. And I kept thinking. Well, because it's, it's, a, it's a baby face entrance. And at the sure. time, Cole yeah. is a heel. Like, you've got him doing this cool rap entrance, and it just seemed like something that you would see a good guy do. It didn't seem like, and I mean, I Adam Cole is a quote unquote cool heel, so but it just yeah, I I think it's just because that's something we think a babyface would do. I, you know, that brings up an interesting question. We talked a lot about Triple H here. Um should heels even have this stuff done for them? I mean, when Punk was played to the ring, he had turned heel, so right? So should this be done for heels? It depends on what it is. I mean, if you're a big enough star, you should get certain things. Like, I mean, uh, Bobby Roode was a heel throughout his NXT run, but like having like the the guy come out and play piano and get the crap the 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 uh, choir behind him is something that Bobby Roode would do because at the time that was his character that he was a bigger star than anybody else and that he could have he could afford to do that he had the money. Yeah, so good call. I, I I think if it fits their character, it works. Um, yeah. I can't think of many other heels that have had like a big, huge entrance like that. But, um, yeah. Uh, Bray Wyatt. Yeah. The band uh, is uh, Mark Crozier and the Rails. Man, I, I, oh my God, I'm such a big fan of the Bray Wyatt theme. Yeah. I, I love it. And the, the Fiend version of it managed to be even better. I love that remix. Like when the Fiend first debuted, I think that was one of the coolest debuts in a long time, and that music helped a lot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, his debut in that in that new mask and everything very unsettling. The way the camera was, you know, going back and forth and the lighting and all that stuff. Yeah, I got to hand it to him. And the, initially, it was great. Don't know if it stayed great, but initially yeah. it was pretty freaking great. <laughs> initially it was awesome. I mean, just him coming out and you couldn't see him all the way, like it was dark, and then it zoomed out and you could see him carrying the lantern, which is Bray Wyatt's head. It's just yeah. oh man, that debut was awesome. Um like yeah, but your AEW theme, so I'm just trying to think. Like I said, I like Scorpio Sky's theme, the Reach for the Sky is cool. Um uh, Cody's Cody's theme is cool, but that's not really an AEW theme because he had that theme everywhere he went after WWE. Um, and neither is the Bucks, but dude, it's a really good song. Like if you put I, it, in, yeah. if you put it yeah. in your ears and not just listen to it through a speaker, it's really good. <laughs> so. Yeah, I like the Bucks theme. I am in the, I'm in the minority, I think, but I am a bigger fan of Battle Cry than, than uh. Omega's New Japan theme song. I'm a bigger fan of his current theme song. Really? I love it. Wow. So there's a company we haven't touched on yet. Um, I think if I had to 
start putting my bid in for whose song fits him better than anything. I think Okada's song is freaking phenomenal. Yeah, definitely agree that the coin drop just oh. come on, man. Is that the equivalent of the glass shattering for that company where the second you hear it, you know it's him and everybody's standing up to get a glimpse of him? I mean It is for me. Um definitely. I mean his his uh I think that was Wrestle Kingdom last year, not this year, when he had like the whole entrance of him standing in the rain with the with the umbrella up and then it had like the big statues crash into each other and then it just cut into the theme song and he had like the glow in the dark robe. Yeah. One of the coolest entrances I've ever seen. Um yeah. Shinsuke's original New Japan theme song is up there for me as well. Um really loved his New Japan theme song. Um, Tanahashi's the music that he's, he's using now the first one fit as well but the second one fits too because Tanahashi's music is that anime fast pitched you know, guitar solo kind of song I mean it it fits him to a T man um yeah and of course Kase Ni Nare um for Minoru Suzuki ah wow yeah I um, mean that's another one where everybody things along to it as soon as it hit cafe nina ray okay so there's one of my choices for this song doesn't fit who it's for i mean it does because it's him and because we're used to it but if you heard that song and said pick the guy this goes with you're like this is not good with Minoru suzuki shut up <laughs> yeah i think we're just used to it because it's Minoru suzuki and it's his big entrance um I mean, as a yeah, when you talk about just quintessential wrestling, in the same way that you talk about Hogan and HBK, you got to throw Juice and Thunder Liger's theme song up there. Oh man, yeah, uh, just so many great memories about around it, man. And yeah, I mean, I just watched his last entrance for his last match, and it's just so emotional watching yeah. him do it, like all his poses and doing and have the habit with a crowd before COVID. Man, it's just great moments. Um, uh, best in the company, almost right up there with Okada is God's theme song. It's, they've oh had my two God. great theme songs. <laughs> like the the original one is really great as well, but their new theme song is so cool, so good. It's so good. I mean, and they they are New Japan for life. They are. They're both committed, and I love that about them. But if they ever decide to travel from one company to the next, dude, that song, you don't ever need to do anything else you, for yeah, them. You that can't song replace that theme song. Yeah. You can't. You cannot replace that theme song. Yeah. Um, but New Japan, I mean, uh, Naito has a great theme song. Yes. Um. Uh, you know, uh, Hiroki Goto which maybe doesn't jump out at, at an ordinary fan. It's got a great song. A lot of these songs really do fit the guys in New Japan, man, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the the straight forward, forward Bullet Club theme song. Oh, man, yeah. Can't get much better than that, man. It's right up there. It's the, it's, it, when you think of like posses coming out and like having a theme, like you, of course, think NWO's theme yep, song. Yep, yep. Um, you think DX's theme song, but Bullet Club is up there, man. It's it's so memorable. Um, that era of AJ and like the Bucks and Omega and all of them in it, and ah, that theme song playing when like the the confetti's coming down when uh, AJ wins the IWGP title and they're all there and they have the big flag behind them. <laughs> That's classic, man. Classic. And you're talking you're talking about like the factions and stuff. I mean, the Horsemen had their own song uh that WCW gave them and I think they carried it into WWE when they did like the Hall of Fame in- inductions and stuff. It's not bad. Um it's just that long guitar solo and and you hear like horses galloping in the beginning of it. Um some of the faction songs are really good for sure. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, you NWO is probably the most iconic faction theme song um yeah but yeah i mean it might be just i'm a big new japan fan but bullet club's up there for me um, no i agree it's it's iconic for sure uh i'm trying to think other other new japan theme songs um dude ishii yeah oh takes some 10 minutes to get to the ring because he's waiting on the song but it's really <laughs> good <laughs> 
It's really good. Uh, I, so so this is good. Togi Makabe uses Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin, but he they you can't use it on the streaming <laughs> service because that's why it always pops up. This song, you know, due to international rights, it got through. I think one time, maybe twice. And they didn't cover it up. And I'm like, that's how I knew he was using Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. I'm like, oh my God, he uses Zeppelin. This is the coolest thing ever. Because I didn't know. So, <laughs> I so never cool. knew that. Yeah. Um, I, Jay White's a good thing. has a good theme for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I surprisingly, I was I was mad on it at first. But I really like Evil's new theme song as with Bullet Club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was really mad on it until he won the title and they played it and you had Hiromu like screaming in the background and <laughs> come on, man. It, that was a moment, man. I know people were mad at the time because Naito lost, but man, that was a moment. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's, you know, if we're going to let certain other companies get away with making moments, we got to let this company do it too. I mean, it's, you know, Stuff that you're going to remember and talk about for months to come, maybe even years. I mean, I'm I'm good with that. Plus, you know, it's an off on a rant here, but I mean, you either keep evil where he's at, and he's always right behind Naito, or you build him up as a main event guy. I mean, if you have an opportunity to build someone up, you build them up. And Gato has proven, and listen, Gato's not the not perfect kids by any means. A lot of mistakes being made in that company all the time, just like any other company on the planet. But when he commits to someone, he pretty much stays committed to them. I mean, Evil is still up yeah. there in terms of the pecking order of that company. Yeah, I think G.O.D. might have the best next to Okada in that freaking company, man. I really yeah, think G.O.D. is, they're perfect. Uh, I mean, depending on how much you like how corny it is, uh, we're punky yeah. 3K. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So, uh, no one's told Rocky about the rapping stuff yet, have they? Like, everybody's no. being nice... God forbid I ever met the guy and he recalled this conversation and said, oh, I heard what you said about me. Um, no disrespect. He's not my favorite rapper of all time. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I just think Rapunky 3K works for what they want to do with that that tag team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, man, him coming out and rapping along with it was like the gas gun. <laughs> yeah, that's very odd. Uh. Yeah, I really like the new. I really like the Young Bucks new um, New Japan theme song too. Before they changed it to this current one, they're using right. Um, I mean, of course, you gotta you gotta say Devil's Guy. Like Omega Devil's Guy is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it fits him perfectly because it's so over dramatic and <laughs> it's, yeah, it's perfect for him. Um, but again, I am a big believer that his current theme song is better that is a hot take yeah i know a lot of people won't agree with that but i i really enjoy his current theme um i on it i left her out but i like hikaru shida's theme song as well yeah i can get with that i can get with that for sure um so we haven't really talked a ton about AEW in terms of music we've touched on a little bit but um john moxley dude yeah Dude. <laughs> his, yeah, his New Japan theme song is actually pretty cool too. I love it. That that's his Death Rider. Cause in New Japan he's de- he's labeled as Death Rider because they and you know they're gonna sell some merch, uh, get a cut of it, and I'm totally fine with that. They didn't change his name for God's sake. It's just his nickname. So um, but I'm with you. It's it's slower, it's a bluesy song in New Japan. Uh and that's not what he's doing in the AEW, but Yeah, the, the energy behind his AEW theme. And him coming down the stairs at at a daily place is just at this point that's his signature at this point like that's his theme song now. Yeah, I've I learned the baseline to that, and it's tricky, but it's crazy fun to play. It's a thousand miles an hour that song. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it, but it sure is. It's it's cool though. Oh man, somebody else who has a cool theme song that has like a low like trap baseline to it is Io Shirai. Oh my God. You no know, kidding. Yeah. That's really good stuff, by the way. Yeah. That's really the new guys the too. Songs. That's the new uh, guys too, I think. I is it? Is the, I or think is that so. CFOs? Um funny enough, I was listening to that on the way home today too. 
I thought for sure it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, if it's the new guys, that's their, that's, that's the few out of their, out of theirs that they've done now that I like. Um, yep. Def Rebel did, uh, Tokyo Shock is the name of the song by Def Rebel. Yeah. So I there you enjoy go. that. Oh man. Speaking of, we didn't say, um, not licensed rappers, but right. Wale does big, big E's new theme song. Really enjoy his new theme song. I, uh, man, if we're talking about rappers doing theme songs, so apparently Megaran has did a theme song for Kofi Kingston, and it was supposed to be the theme song he used as his WrestleMania entrance. And this thing has never seen the night, the light of day. And every now and then, I just kind of tweet like, "All right, Mega Ran, when are you gonna put the theme song out?" Uh, Biggie's got his own theme song, and he'll just throw out a joke and be like, "Ah, oh, well, you're not ready for it yet." I was like, "Come on, man, the theme song out, man." <laughs> And and he did it for who now? Say again. It was for Kofi. Uh, oh, for his I WrestleMania see. match. Um, he was supposed to come out to his own theme and not the New Japan, not the uh, New Day's theme. Wow. What do you think about? And I, we're bouncing back. What about uh, the New Day's theme? About how it was so incredibly hokey in the very beginning, uh, and then they, you know, had the gospel choir behind it. it was really weird and like, what are we doing here? And you know. I don't know how you felt about it, but the whole aesthetic of the black gospel choir and here's these three black guys and they're going to do this church revival thing. And I'm thinking, this is what you gave the guys. Did you do this? Cause they're not white. Why are we doing this Reverend yeah. Devon crap again, dude? I don't want to get off on a thing here, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't too much care for it at first, but that is the magic of new day and those three guys and how hard they work to make, yes. not just the gimmick work, but, now at this point, I couldn't imagine them with another theme song. It's just, it's their thing. It's kind of like um, when you think of Becky Lynch's theme song, it's not that great. But Becky is just so um, charismatic and popular. She's managed to make it work. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. And I kind of wish she would get something else. But yeah. uh, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, man. Um, yeah, I could see her coming back with something else. I mean, I, I, I think it's a good time to, you know, refresh her gimmick and give her something different when she comes back. Um, but yeah, I was a big, I don't know, guy about them changing their theme. Um, but man, when she came out of WrestleMania 35 with that theme and like, she's walking around strutting, pointing, and you kind of know it's her moment and she's going to win both titles. It worked. I, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta give it credit. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, 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 I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm thinking back in my head about how easy all this used to be when nobody cared, when nobody tried to sue everybody and it wasn't, I own that. You can't use that. Cause I own that. And I wrote that song. And like, you know, I I'm thinking of one tag team with one song. And that's the Road Warriors with Iron Man by Black Sabbath. I mean, yes. dude, I I know the, oh, what a rush stuff that they took from Nightmare on Elm Street. I know it was great and it was over and it was fun. Nothing replaces Sabbath doing Legion of Doom, man. Yeah, I agree. So, and it's funny because the drum beat of that song, by the time the guitar kicks in, They've already gotten in the ring and destroyed the two guys in the ring and the bell's rung already. So <laughs> it's over that quick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you, you think about, uh, <laughs> you think about like the Iron Man movies and how much like some of that music gave, made Iron Man movies what they were. Um, yeah. This is just the same tone. I mean, I'm of course just bring it up cause I know you're a comic guy like me. And, oh yeah. Man, yeah. Just appreciating that, that this is, like, you could make an Iron Man movie without that music. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a version of um, of the end of, well, not the end of Endgame, but the climax of Endgame when um, Thanos tries to do the snap and he looks up and realizes Tony has the, the gems. <laughs> Somebody dubbed um, Iron Man over it. Like, the and it's like it's playing, it's like it's welling up when, he, when, the, when you see he has the gems. And it's saying, you know, it hits the I am Iron Man right oh, before he does man. a snap. It's so awesome. Chills watching it every time I watch it. I got to look that up. I definitely got to look that up. That's good stuff. 
You know, and it's kind of the same idea. It's the same idea of, you know, this this has to mean something. This is important and this is going to, you're going to remember this moment. I mean, it's, you know, I think it's a lot of what we're talking about on this show today, man, is uh, just, you know, not just the wrestlers in question, but the company wanting to, and, you know, not for nothing, I've been a part of stuff like that before too, where it's like, look, I want the music to hit at a certain time. It's got to hit right here. It's got to be just as he looks up. It's got to be just as she turns her back, whatever. Because we want the fans to remember. We want them to to realize, hey, this is what this meant. I mean, it's, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, other old school songs that when nobody cared, Rick Rude in the NWA used to use uh, Smooth Operator by Sade. <laughs> but it fit him perfectly. <laughs> And he had that horn, that jazzy horn at the beginning of the song. And then there he is coming down the aisle with Paul Jones. And uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, Dusty used like Bob Seger. He would use old time rock and roll. Uh, I'm trying to think yeah. of who else in that company was using stuff. Um, yeah. Again, the kids, this was back when, you know, not everybody on the planet was trying to sue each other and, you know, yeah. I mean, it, I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. But. but I mean, this is like, like AWA and NWA. That, and I think that's why there's such a different vibe to like indie shows. When you go to indie shows, like I mentioned earlier, and you get a lot of them using unlicensed music and it's like, well, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. They can get away with it. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, yeah. When you think of like the Pokemon theme song, like that does not belong in wrestling, but <laughs> It was synonymous with Kylie Ray for a while because that was her thing. Right. Uh, dude. Inner Sandman for the Sandman. Yeah. I mean, he would be six beers in by halfway point of that song, just coming through the crowd and, and letting people drink and him drinking and bashing it over his head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's something to be said about the old ECW music. Um the 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 theme to the ECW uh, show itself, well, and WWE kept that theme for years and gave it to Heyman as an entrance song. Oh uh, man, uh, Mike Awesome theme song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome is his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can't remember a lot of uh, uh, song like Rob Van Dam stuff from ECW and WWE. You know, oh, uh, I yeah, I was a I was a big fan of Rob Van Dam when he came over to WWE. Um, just just his look, I mean, the way he wrestled. Um, he was one of the first guys at that time that was doing like the kicks other than like X Pac and yeah, his theme song was really cool. And you know, we could probably do a three hour show and still not name everybody. We and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people we've forgotten about along the way. We didn't even mention Bret Hart and how iconic that guitar riff is at the beginning of his song. Like, good Lord, the second you hear it, you know. Uh, even uh, Natalia's song is not, it's got the opening riff, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, uh, as as a as a bigger Owen fan, I was a huge Owen Hart fan. Yeah. Um, I didn't like many of his theme songs, but I did like the, I think that's his fourth theme song. Um. Oh, can't remember how it goes. Was it when he was doing the Black Heart gimmick? I think so. I never liked that song they they stuck him with. This sound like it sounded like a factory, like a hammer in the background, like metal hitting hitting metal. I didn't like that one either. Oh, I hate that song with a passion. I think the one I'm thinking of it goes like dun 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 dun. dun. dun, dun, dun. It almost sounds like Rocky music. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. I think I know what you're talking about. Dude, what about Crash Holly? <laughs> Dude, that gigantic metal song and little Crash Holly coming down the aisle. That's great stuff. Yeah, Crash was Crash is underrated, man. Yeah, you talk sure. about one of the greatest like cruiserweights we've ever seen, if you want to call him a cruiserweight. Because he didn't really wrestle like a cruiserweight. Um, yeah, uh, I think. I, we haven't mentioned Goldberg's music. Goldberg's music is like perfect for him as well. Yes, it is. And that's uh, back to the WCW themes. 
Do you, or, so which is better, the WCW original theme or the remix WB theme? I would go with the WCW. Just I would too. I, think, I, I mean, it's, it's closer to like his most popular reign. Um, yeah, I think the original is much better for him. Uh, I'm going to throw out a hot take, but I think I prefer Voodoo Child for Hogan over over... I am a real American. There's nothing about it. It just works for him. That's not a hot take. That's a that's a bad take. Here's why. <laughs> Here's why. Because Jimmy's the best man, and Hogan's not the best man. And like, He's not. oh, I just can't. I, I and I know, like you said, he used it, and then, yeah, it kind of fits the NWO motif. But oh. You know, I just get so mad flipping back and forth between Raw and Nitro, and I'd see him. I'm like, "Stop crapping on Jimi Hendrix's song, man!" I couldn't stand it. <laughs> yeah, I think I preferred him coming out to Voodoo Child, but to me, I just think Hollywood Hogan was always cooler than regular Hogan. I was never a big fan of Red and Yellow Hogan. No, nah, me neither. Because it it wasn't real. It's was phony. The whole thing was phony. I mean, it's a work, kids. Spoiler alert: whole thing's work. So uh, yeah. I'm going to throw out a super underrated theme and I'm sure I'm not sure a lot of people will even remember it is Steve Blackman's theme. I remember that theme. Let me get it in my head. I had like the drums to it. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's starting to sound familiar. Yeah, I think it, this, the theme was better than the guy, I think. <laughs> I always liked the mystique of Steve Black when he came out with like the black pants and then he had like the, he always had like the weapons he would use when they actually did interesting hardcore matches for WWE. I think that's an instance of where the image and the mystique and what could have been is <coughs> much better than what we got. Yeah, I agree. No offense to him. I just, either, look, either you're cut out for this or you're not. And uh, he had all the skills in the world, but. No personality at all. Not even the slightest. Yeah, what, I agree. What about the APA, man? Yes. Yeah. They oh, also had a great theme. Great music. Great stuff. Not going to pay the bills here on the 6M podcast. So kids, you can't hear none of this stuff. You're going to have to go look it up on your own. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I mentioned the Nicki Minaj babyface Victoria theme, but I, the tattoo is the better theme. The, the all, all the things you said. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with that. I uh um I don't think the old WCW themes get a lot of love. I think that I think they're just so generic. The NWO thing is a difference. It's different. Sting's song was different. Um to this day, every time Sting goes to a new company, that company will try to remix the WCW song. Yeah. And you know, I get AEW's done it too. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Sting's current AEW theme? Maybe being the best one he's ever used. Uh, it could be. I, I really enjoy his entrance um, yeah. with the snow and everything. Um, yeah, I, I can agree with that take. Yeah, I think he's pretty good. Uh, again, I, I'm sure the second we stop recording this, I'll be there'll be stuff rushing to my head, things that we should have talked about. Hard to get everything in here, kids. A lot uh, of great I, music. You've, of course, got to throw the the uh, the Hardy Boys theme. Oh, which was not written for them. That song existed already. Really? Yep. Uh, it was, in fact, I've heard it in other things before. And oddly enough, I saw it on an episode of Kids in the Hall back in the day. <laughs> yes. And it was just some generic song they had for a goof, goofball little skit they were doing. And I thought, holy crap, that's the Hardy Boys song. Man, I just, I couldn't picture it without Jeff coming out and, and hitting the hitting the trademark Jeff dance while it's blaring. Come on, man. You know what? I could be getting that mixed up with uh, Booker T's song. Booker T's song was not written for him either. Hmm. Yeah, Booker T's song. Maybe that's the song I'm thinking of for Kids in the Hall. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what it was. But I have heard the Hardy Boys song in other places. But, you know, I can't imagine Booker using a different song. He used one as 
King Booker. But yeah. it just wasn't as good, I don't think. Nah, his his regular theme is his is his most notable theme. Um yeah, I was a big fan of the of Lita's theme as well at that time. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I well, you know what? I'll I'll put it to you this way. The song where the the guy's screaming through the whole lyric for Lita. Yeah. Oh. I just there's something about that I can't stand. Um yeah, I think there's a remix version of it that's kind of better. Um, okay, well that's good. But I mean, like I, the guy think screaming through it, it it fits Lita perfectly. Yeah. Um but yeah, not my type of music, but <laughs> for a theme song, it it fit her perfectly. So what woman had the best theme, you think? What woman has the best theme? That might be a it might be a bit tougher. I think Trish's theme was fine. Um I really like Trish's theme. I think for current era, Sasha might have the best. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll go um, with that. I again I'm a big fan of Oscar's theme song. Yeah. The the problem with the women, a lot of the women during the Divas era had terrible, terrible theme songs. I just Very couldn't true. stand it. It was super overly poppy music. And it was all so super cute. See, I couldn't stand it. Um AJ Lee's song wasn't bad. Oh, you know who who who's I like? She's not a, that's technically from the Divas era, is um is Paige. Yeah, I listened to that one today, actually. Like, I couldn't stand Melina's with that, like, oh. wailing guitar at the beginning. It was like nailed on a chalkboard. Yeah. Uh, well, it, was, it was kind of their act, though, right? Kind of annoying. Yeah, it was. And... Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, Trish's is just iconic because Trish is a legend. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I mean, like I said, the tattoo for Victoria was great at that time. Boy, it's tough because man, there were a, there was a lot of bad music for the women, man. Yeah, <laughs> they got a lot of that stock music too. That that didn't help either. And that um, god awful song that the Bellas used, dude. Oh, the you can look, but, but you, you can't. Oh, can't. oh, dude, it's so bad. Oh, yeah, I didn't. It it fits them, but I yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, it's, it's hot uh, garbage. Can't stand it. Yeah, it fits them perfectly, but I do not like it. Uh, I desperately want Bailey to change her current theme. It's just so generic to me. I'll say for the record, I miss cute baby face Bailey. I right. yeah, I I really liked her um her baby face um theme music. Yeah. I think I'm over the soccer mom haircut Bailey. I think I'm over it. The man I need to speak to your manager haircut. I'm over it. I'm I'm done. I'm ready to go back to ponytail Bailey, who's smiling and happy and not trying to be mean all the time. <laughs> so I like I enjoy her heel work. I just think they've got to do give her more things to do. Like the fact that she was champion for close to a year and she's not on a WrestleMania card is crazy to me. Yeah. Uh hmm, other women theme songs. Um it's it's harder. It's harder because as it's many It's harder cuz there's they I tell you they have a lot of generic music, man. Yeah. Um China's music is up there, of course. Like her, once she broke off and started doing her own thing. Oh yeah, for sure. Kind of forgot about China there. Um, Guerrero's song "Lie, Cheat, and Steal." Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. Latino Heat, dude. That song. Are you kidding me? Once you get that in your head, it'll never get out of your head. Man, that's that's crazy. That I had such a hard time thinking of women's days because there are so many bad ones. Like. Um, a lot of them had like that terrible like stock music, and a lot of them had interchangeable music, like that like three of them used. Um, Very true. Oh man, what do you think of Kid Rock's other addition to WWE as the Stacy Keebler thing? <laughs> oh, uh, he was ripping off uh, legs by ZZ Top, right? Yes. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh man! I mean, uh, yeah, he's he's. Uh, I wasn't a fan. I'm I'm not a fan either. Uh, I'll say this to his credit: I I do think he's a talented guy. Um, I do think that he's a smart business guy. 
Um, but I've I've never bought an album, and I don't have any intention of ever buying one. Um, I know several years ago he he uh, was putting a concert tour together, and like his tickets were like thirty bucks or maybe twenty. And he's I, I saw him on an interview on some uh, news channel where he was saying he's leaving Ticketmaster out, and he's like, "We're going to do this for the fans." He's like, "Twenty bucks gets you in the door. That's it." And he's like, he said the beer should be five bucks. And he was dead serious. And he's like, this is what we're doing. And he said, whatever money we're going to lose, we'll eat the money. I don't care. Because <laughs> his point was, you know, we'll take the loss. I want I want people to come and I everybody needs to have a good time and not go broke to come see a concert. And I'm like, you know what? That's pretty freaking cool. Like, I, I still don't really care for him. But there's he has his moments of like, he really is just trying to be like a real guy. And then yeah. you'll see him, you'll see him kind of shoehorn his way in with the rap act of the moment on stage. And you're like, yeah, did they invite you or did you kind of, I don't know what the answer is. Maybe he's well, over. Yeah. Well, I mean, when he, when he first started, he was basically doing like rap music before True. he started jumping, jumping into like the country and like rock phase. But when he first came out, he was basically doing rap music. Um, but yeah. Uh, what do you think of Charlotte's theme song? I, I'm kind of on the fence with it. I under like it fits her character, um, but just like this, like techno version of <laughs> of Rick's theme, Rick's song, and Rick's song. How do we go an hour and a half and don't talk about maybe the most over song of any wrestler besides Hogan? Maybe. I mean, the minute you, I mean, of course, that'd be added the woo on top of it. Yeah, of course, because. Yeah, of course. They have to add some kind of sound effects like they did with Ricochet's theme song and through that <laughs> whatever that bullet thing is, it sounds terrible. Yeah. Um Flair's song is iconic, folks. I mean, obviously. Um, here's the thing about Charlotte's song being a remix of that. Once you use it, you're kinda using it. I mean, can she ever not use it now? It's kinda like Yeah, it's her thing. Yeah. I'm not crazy about it either. But you know, it's, like you said, it's her thing. It's whatever. Um, I, I'm just thinking this in my head. A lot of the women have bad things, man. <laughs> Abaddon, <laughs> Abaddon's theme in, in AEW is not bad, but dude, you and I have never spoke about Abaddon. I I flat out have a have an issue trying to look at that chick. She the one of the best makeup jobs I've ever seen. Ever terrifying. I'm, Dude, thank you. <laughs> terrifying. Thank to me. you. I thought I was the only one. I almost can't even watch the screen when she's on TV. Like, legitimately terrifying. I think yes. it's a great gimmick. Um, yes. Somebody that has great music to me out of the AW women is Jay Cargill. I think her music is great. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, we've not seen her enough. I mean, we're going to see a lot more of her, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I think they've done a great job of, you know, creating a new star in her. Every time they do something with her, they're they're clearly protecting her and they're clearly putting her in a spot where she looks like a star. I mean, even like the pre recorded um promos they're doing now and the vignettes, they all look really good. They look well produced. Yeah, you're right. I mean it's it's obvious the way she carries herself, the way they're getting behind her. I still submit it's so early to be giving her this when she's really still so unproven. But, you know, if the other company can take Brock Lesnar, who had never, who the only stuff he'd ever done was an OVW and, and catapult him to the top. I mean, as long as aw has got faith in her and she's looking good in the ring and everybody's safe. Yeah. You know, as long as, yeah, as long as they're not going, okay, let's put the title on her next week. Like, right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's inevitable. She's eventually going to be champion. But I think you've got time to do that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're stardom wrestlers that I like their theme songs, but those are all like deep cuts because a lot of people probably don't watch stardom or a lot of Joshi wrestling. Is, is um, stardom stuff produced in house or, or are they just taking whatever they want to take? Um, I think some of it is produced in house. Um, I think some of it might be licensed music i'm not sure here's one um, just, here's one just jumped into my head bad street usa man 
<laughs> Fabulous Freebirds, baby. I'm just saying. Michael Hayes uh, singing his own song. Uh, Michael Hayes uh, singing Big Show theme song. You got to throw that one out there, too. With the That's basically the, the, the stereotypical blues riff. That's all it is. It's the doo-doo, doo-doo, doo-doo. Yep. And and Michael Hayes being Michael Hayes. <laughs> Man. Um yeah, I got thoughts on Hayes, but uh that Bad Street song, I'm telling you right now, once you get again for me, once I get it in my head, forget it. It's in my head for a week. Cause his singing voice is the same as his speaking voice, it's the same thing. Oh, uh, you know something that was surprisingly cool, and we probably won't ever hear it again now, is um every now and then they decide to mash up people's theme songs. Like WWE does it really terribly now. They'll just throw somebody's theme song, and then in a minute, it just in the in the middle of it, it just cuts to the other person. Yeah, theme it just song. cuts. Yeah. But the few times that it was great was this mashup they did of Judas and MJF's theme song. Oh man, it was so cool. That was one of the things Ruckus did fantastically. Yeah, because they use that as a tag team, right? Yes. I forgot about that. That's pretty good. It's funny because that just ended and I'd already forgotten about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, dude, a lot of this, of course, has it depends on who's behind the scenes calling the shots and pulling the strings. And um, you would like to think that that the talent has a say so and how everything sounds. And uh, like you go back to the 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 um the big show stuff. Like, I don't even think he knew what was going to be given to him. And he's like, well, okay. Like he didn't really care about it either. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I would be in such a position to try to call my own shot, but it's like, dude, I'm, you're going to, whatever you give me today, whatever you give me right now in this moment is what I'm, I make, I could be stuck with this thing for 30 years. There's a possibility I could be. So I want to like it. Like, how do I, you know, Alistair black dude, that music, Oh, that was, oh, they should have never changed his theme. His theme was perfect the way it was. His entrance was perfect. Ah, uh, yeah. What's he even doing now, by the way? I have no idea. I That's mean, a- I, I really liked Andrade's theme as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Aleister Black, that's a tell-all interview that I can't wait to hear when he's done with them. I can't wait to hear it. Oh man, did did you hear any of the Andrade stuff that came out this week? Um, very little, very little. He he was he was doing some shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have uh, to go. I have to get caught up on it. You know, it it. So you mentioned Andrade started got me start start thinking about Ring of Honor. Is there anything in Ring of Honor that jumps out at you? I mean. Uh, their music just doesn't really, I don't know. Uh, the Briscoe Brothers song as a, as Baby Faces. Yeah. Reach for the Sky, boy, at the beginning of it. That yeah. song, dude, that song's killer. Oh, man. We, we, we just said CM Punk has two great theme songs. We're wrong. He has three great theme songs because his ROH theme song was actually fantastic. Ah, I forgot about that. And they got away with using music and not getting a license for it. Cause I wasn't uh Daniel Bryan using the final countdown in that in that company? Or was it Nigel McGinnis who used it there? I think that was Nigel, because I'm pretty sure that Daniel Bryan was still using Flight of Phoenix there. I mean I, Fl- Flight of Valkyries, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, okay. I think. I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about uh like uh recent or like current guys. Uh Roosh's song is not bad that he's using in Ring of Honor. But as far as a song jumping out at me, I mean I, from that company, there's not really any that's kind of jumping out at me right now. Um Cole Cabana. Boom boom. Cole Cabana. He takes that song wherever he goes. It fits him, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's just his music. Like you can I mean what what he was using it with the podcast, it's just his thing. Um Yeah, I mean there's plenty of indie guys that are just using music that I it just feels wrong that they're not using the music when they're anywhere else. Um 
Yeah, because I mean, I immediately thought that with um, with Swerve, for example, like I'm like, man, Swerve. When I think Swerve, I think I think Shaka Khan. Like I just <laughs> they can throw any music they want around them. Like the Shaka Khan ain't nobody. It just fits him. Um, man, I mean, a guy who theme music I don't like. And I mean, we don't we didn't talk that much about Impact, but I don't like Rich Juan's Impact theme. Um, I. Um, I I think his indie stuff, his music fit better there. I even like the WWE theme song he had better. The uh, the can't you handle it? Can you handle it? I like, I like that song. Yeah, yeah. I I like that better than his Impact theme song. I don't care for that record. Yeah, it just it it feels like Impact has had. Um... I don't know. I I just I don't I don't think their theme game is very strong. And maybe there's just somebody I'm not thinking of. Uh James Storm would be an exception. Yeah. Uh I think Chris Bay has good theme music. Um I I like Tiana's new music as well with Impact. Yeah. Uh but yeah, there's a lot of them that I'm not. They have a lot of generic theme music as well. Um yeah, I think that's <laughs> I think that's 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 about all I got on Impact. Like a lot of their music is yeah. And you know, honestly, man, if if you can envision in your head the song being on the generic list for the WWE games that you're trying to give your creator wrestler, it's probably too generic. So. Yeah. Um uh the the Good Brothers theme music, current theme music is growing on me, but it's hard to get past the WWE theme music because I just loved it so much. I'm trying to get that song in my head right now. Uh the Good Brothers? Yeah. Oh the uh, the, the, the the WWE theme. Oh yeah, the the uh I can't remember the words to it. But you know, it started with the doo 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 do. Then it had the I, I forgot. It's a it's a cover of something, isn't it? Ah, uh, you might be right. Oh, I got it in my head now. Okay, you did it. Yeah, that's that's what did it. That's got it in my head now. Yeah, I can't. It, it's a cover of something, isn't it? I think so. I think so. Um, but yeah, I really like their, I really like their WWE theme music. I even like the the OCs music when they changed it. Um, but yeah, the Impact music is just now growing on me, but. Uh, yeah. Other than that, there's not a lot of impact music. Uh, Man, I, here's what I got to do. I got to find, uh, a really, uh, a, a great rapper and just give them the 6M and say, baby, I need a theme song. Got to hook me up. That's what I got to do, man. <laughs> got to find somebody. It's got to be good though. I don't want it to be, you know, backyard or, you know, out of your basement or some stuff. I want it to sound good and look good and be awesome. So that'll be my next quest. If anybody listening's got a rapper in mind, shoot me the info. Let's talk. So that'd be pretty sweet. Uh, can you think of somebody that maybe like a like a mainstream musician that you'd love to hear do a song for somebody? Somebody that you're like, man, this person's got to do. Because you know, dude, there's wrestling fans in every walk of life. I mean, yep, Bad Bunny. Sure. Bad Bunny's the the latest example of somebody that just had to get in. Um, yeah, I'm surprised Bad Bunny hasn't done anybody's theme yet. Uh, I, and I, I think you've got a case in Damian Priest where you could do Damian Priest's theme song at some point. Yeah. Uh, hmm. There's a lot of rappers that are wrestling fans. A lot. Um, I mean, Wale is one of them. He's doing a, uh, Biggie theme song. Um. What about the number of rappers that have that Flair's been hooked up with over the years? Um, yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. He's got the the uh, Offset song. Um, so, Flair yeah, Flair's, drip, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the Offset song. Is that uh, what it is? Yeah, that shows you how much uh, I know about the song. I've heard it a few times. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of awkward because it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, yeah. all these kids, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, there's a ton of rappers I can think of that would probably fit. Like, like Chance the Rapper would be perfect for a new day, new day theme song if they oh, wanted man. another rapper other than Mega Ran. 
And he he writes that kind of like just Chance the Rapper doing a verse over their like current theme because he's done other gospel esque music. Right. He would fit perfect. Right. Um, I love that actually. Yeah. Uh, other rappers. Uh, I think he. I don't know if they would do it, but West Side Gun is a huge wrestling fan. He's a rapper. I would love to see West Side do somebody's theme song. Um, mainstream, other right mainstream artists I could think of, like. Hmm. I don't know. I'm an old school rock guy, so I'm. 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 Uh, I don't know. For me, maybe Zach Wild from uh, Black Label Society. Cause he's, he actually did color commentary on, uh, pro, was it, uh, pro wrestling society X, that short lived MTV thing that had X Pac on it. He was <laughs> doing some play by play as a color guy. And I'm like, Zach wild looks like a pro wrestler. Like how has he never done a song for somebody in the business is beyond yeah. me. I, I don't get it. You know, <laughs> you know what I just thought about when you mentioned X Pac, remember the X factor theme song? Yes. <laughs> you know, you're dealing with the X factor. Oh man! And I think the same guy that did the DX song did X Pac song because he screams at the beginning of it. Yes. And it's it's basically just a rip off of uh, DX's song. Yeah, it basically is. It's basically like a variation of it. Yeah. But yeah, X Factor with a whole different version of what is this? Like, the, it's one of those songs that's it's bad. But as wrestling fans, we've heard when you hear something in repetition a lot, it's just kind of like you just get used to it. Oh, I'll tell you one that I hated. Not Naomi's current song, but the one before it. Um, are you talking about the Funkadactyl theme song, "The Funk Is on the Rope"? No, that was great. <laughs> that was so generic it was awesome like <laughs> does, does somebody call my mom yes i'm sorry i like that i'm talking about the one when she went solo um it's great her new theme song is basically this the same thing it's just like an edm version of it yes and it's much easier to swallow than the other one because the other one was god awful yeah i hated it it's, i hated it so much i blocked it from memory so don't you ever try to remind me of it don't even try to sing it <laughs> Um, yeah, but her current, yeah, her current gimmick and everything is so much better. Um, I, even though I did enjoy her as a heel, um, yeah, her current EDM version of it works better for what she's doing. Um, and the somebody call my mom is fun. I'm sorry. I can't help it. It's fun. It's so stupid, goofy, but it's, lo I just love it. <laughs> you can dance to it. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, that's the line, Phil. Hey, it's got a beat and I can dance to it. That's all that matters. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, gets a seven from me. Yeah, uh, and I, yeah, I'm sure there's other, other bad ones that I'm trying to block out of my brain. Yes, and not think of. Um, like remember, like remember Coachman's theme. Um, not really. Yeah, it's it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's like rap, and it has like this weird '90s esque beat to it. It's yeah, it's bad. I used a few. I'm no longer like a personality personality. Like my gig now is uh, doing play by play and and doing the social media stuff for the Facebook and the YouTube and whatnot, and the podcast host. But when I was like a manager. Uh, I used I actually used Rikishi's theme song when Rikishi went heel. Oh, <laughs> uh, the bad man, dude! It's such a good song. Like, and the crowd that we were playing to, I guess, didn't know the song, and I freaking loved it. And I used it so much that the beginning, when you hear Rikishi say "I'm a bad man," like just when the the drum starts rolling in, people who knew that they they got familiar with it, they knew it was me coming through the curtain. They'd gotten so used to hearing it when the uh, I just love the song. I thought it was cool. And uh, I actually took and, and used the intro of that and matched it up with uh, the Executioners, um, which was uh, the guys from Lincoln Park and somebody else. And I yeah. forget the name of that song. It's Going Down. That's what it was. 
but uh, I've only uh, used a couple from myself over the years. Yeah, as as far as truly bad songs, I'm sure there's plenty that we've not mentioned. Yeah, I, I, a lot that I'm probably trying to block out of my head. Um, yes. Uh, I'm a fan of the Christian theme song. Be- not the last one he had with WWE. The one before that, when he went out on his own. Yeah. It but that sounds like where- an opera at the beginning? Yes. Yes. Chris John. Oh my God, really? <laughs> yeah. It just fit him at the time. It fit him. And the music's not bad. And uh, yeah, it's pretty. Actually, this is not a bad song. I actually like that too. Um, I mean, shoot, we're we're missing out on the on the original Edge theme song that you think you know me. Yes, they've parodied that him and Christian have over the years. They played it with Kazoo's, I think, at one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that fit him too. I, I yeah. you know, you know what's funny? We keep saying the words that fit him. Did it really, or did it, it just familiar? It's just familiar, and we just got used to seeing it, you know? I I think the Christian would fit him because it was so over the top, and that's what he was doing. He was, you know, I'm on my own. I don't need anybody. And it was just so ridiculous <laughs> that it worked. Um, the Edge, I thought his music worked just because it was subdued at the time. And, I mean, you weren't going to beat the Brood theme, but it still was cool, and it worked for him as a breakout star at the time remember when uh, uh edge was using rob zombie yes dude yes. that was so fun so fun that's a good song too by the way really good song i feel like that song is you was used a lot during that time yeah it was um that but i mean that was totally the wwe aesthetic at that time like all the creed music they used at that time oh my god yeah <laughs> Can you take me? Oh my god, dude! T- they- <laughs> hey, listen. They toured the world. They sold a bunch of records and made a ton of money. So no disrespect. They just, I, I just, it's not my thing. It's, not, it's, I don't know. It's kind of like Pearl Jam Light or something. I don't know. Ugh. Yeah, they used a lot of Creed. They used Nickelback a lot. Oh god, don't get me started. No, oh, but yeah, they used a lot of Creed. Uh, what is what is like the most well known Creed song that they've used over and over again? I can't remember what the the um, name of it was. That yeah, there's the one. Yeah, they've used it a bunch, like in video packages and stuff. Didn't they use a song for like Foley's retirement? And I think it was Creed. I think. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, I think my sacrifice is the Creed song I'm thinking of. Yeah, probably so. I think it is. I'm just trying to rack my brain. I think it's my sacrifice. Yeah, a lot of stuff, man. A lot of uh, great moments of great music. Some not so great. Some stuff will stay with you for better or worse forever if you're a wrestling fan. Um, Just think, man. I mean, there could be another blockbuster song out there somewhere that has yet to happen. A blockbuster theme where like, man, that's the greatest thing ever. I mean... I don't know. You just when you think you've heard it, all the great stuff or bad stuff you're going to hear, somebody pops up with something else. And you're like, "Oh, that's really good," or "Man, that's terrible." So, I don't know. Um, I think we covered the basics. So, uh, I'll I'll go back to the first question back when we started this episode. Um, you know, just like I can't envision a time when they'll stop using this. I can't envision a time when it won't matter. I think that the music, the music is just so connected to the business now and connected to everything. I mean, I I just, I can't envision a time where it won't be used and, and that it won't matter. It's just, it's, it's just too important. I mean, if for nothing else, for the vignettes, for the video packages that you can attach a song to, to make it mean something. I think that's, there's a lot to say about that as well, man. Yeah. I mean, when you even look at just like all of the raw theme songs over the years, all of the SmackDown theme songs over Good the call. years, like that, all of that stuff matters. Like, I mean, like the, like the raw theme song during the Attitude Era, like it's just so memorable. Like, <laughs> it's in my head right now. The guy with the toboggan, yeah. the lead singer with the, the, the toboggan on. Yeah. Everything's on yeah. fire. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um,
Um, yeah, I mean, there's SmackDown theme songs that I'm not drawing a blank on, but there's tons of SmackDown theme songs that are the same. They've um, changed SmackDown so many times over the years. So many times. Um, yeah, NXT is the same thing. Like, I I always think of the the the, not the one, not their first one, not the Wild and Young, which is yuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the one like right after that. And for what uh, now you're talking about? For NXT. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't much care for the one they use now. I don't either. I like the one before that um, when they're all in a ring and they were chanting the, we are not your kind. Yeah. I like that one better. But this one, uh, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I actually think the theme to Dynamite is pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, I like it. Um, I think they should stick with that one for years. I wouldn't be changing that at all. I think it's perfect for them, actually. So, Well, um, two hours in. We've probably got another two hours of this for sure. Probably stuff we hadn't even thought about, but I think we've hit the basics and the big ones and the milestones and whatnot. So, um, Phil, give me your last word on uh, on pro wrestling music. What do you got? Uh, there's a fine line you got to hit, of course. Like, yeah, I, like we were saying, there's tons of bad music out there, but there's tons of music that has, you know, made someone's career. It's really one of those things that can make or break your career. Um, you know, I don't, not to say that Stone Cold wouldn't be Stone Cold, but I mean, Stone Cold as a wrestler wouldn't be on the level he is without that theme song. That theme song helped to make him. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's it's just, it seems like perfect casting. And there's so much about Austin's story. That's another podcast from another time. But there's so much about Austin's story and about um, everything that just seemed to fit and come together at the right time. It's almost like it was written for Hollywood. It's perfect. Like how things just came together, including the music. And it was just perfect. I mean... Like you said, man, it's got it, it can make or break a career, and I think that's 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 something important to leave the people with. Is that no matter how much you think we just geeked out for two straight hours about music, and you're totally right, we did. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a pro wrestler, it's important what you're coming out to because it's going to define who you are, what you care, or at least what your character is. You got to be comfortable with it. Uh, you got to either hate it so much that you have to use it because it's perfect, or love it so much because you can't. Hear yourself coming out to anything else. It's got to be, like we said before, man, this could be what you're stuck using for 30 years, so it's got to be good. So, yes, it's important. Yes, it means something. And, yes, in the business professional wrestling, the music is part of the presentation, and the presentation is the majority of who you are is your presentation. Not just what you could do in the ring, but who you are as a character. The music's always going to be a part of that. And that is pro wrestling music. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Check out our social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at 6M Podcast. We'll see you next time.